A couple of new things. Well, first, uh, Ms. Turner, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Tina Turner. I am the assistant principal here at Boyce Elliott Humboldt, uh, my second year as assistant principal. And it's been great, uh, equally challenging, but we are getting through it together and I'm learning a lot and I'm glad to be here with you guys this morning. And Ms. Nicole is actually one of our amazing staff too. Do you want to introduce yourself, Ms. Nicole? Sure, I'm Miss Nicole. I work in the grades three through five communication behavior classroom and I'm a paraeducator. Uh, and if people don't know me, I think I've introduced myself to the two people that are here. But for anybody that's watching, I'm Mr. Cave. Uh, I'm the principal at Boyce Elliott Humboldt. And what we're gonna do is just, when we do do our coffee chats, I'm gonna make sure I record them every month so that we can put it up there for people to get to at their leisure on our YouTube channel. So um, a couple quick updates I wanna just start with. Um, I wanted to update on staff, cause you know, this is our first meeting since we got going and we've added some amazing new staff. Um, and so like our qualified mental health professional, Mr. Loker, Troy Loker has been uh, incredible. He kind of has jumped in already and started running some of our social emotional support. Um, for teachers, like helping them get lessons prepped and getting ready to launch kind of our toolbox, which is our social emotional um, kind of curriculum that we'll be getting into here in the, in the next week. Uh, just talking about emotions and what kind of tools do we use to help kind of cope with or go through. And I think right now is there's no more important time than now to really be focused on that social emotional work and really understanding how do we process all the things that are coming at us. Um, and especially for students as they're, you know, there's so many layers of what they're dealing with and trying to understand it. So he's been an amazing addition. Um, additionally, we got two new first grade teachers, which have been great. If anybody has a first grader, you've hopefully been able to have some time to get to know them, but they're just amazing at what they do. And we were so lucky to get, and both of them came from in district and already had a lot of years of experience in PPS and are just jumping right into our kind of departmentalized approach because in first through fifth grade, we're focused on kind of splitting up subjects and having teachers teach specific subjects and they've jumped in and embraced it right away and just are putting out some amazing stuff. So it's been cool to see that. And then additionally, um, as we kind of built this, we got to add our music program, which our teacher for that is not new to us. He was our STEAM person before, Mr. Todd, and now he's leading the music program, which has been his dream really for most of his life uh, and he's just kind of finishing up his music program and so he is coming in with so much energy and so much excitement about what he can do here um, and what he wants to kind of bring to the neighborhood and he's also lived in the neighborhood for over 10 years i don't know how long 20 years i think um and then additionally we added a math specialist so um we have now we shifted up our our systems within beh as we went to departmentalize we now have a math support team and a literacy support team supporting the teachers that teach those things. And so then those teachers also sit down together weekly with their support team to really talk about how can we improve instruction? What can we do? Uh, what can we do to make uh, BEH kind of stronger academically? Uh, and so Peaches Eltigande is our new math specialist and she has been awesome. She used to actually work at Boyce Elliott Humboldt when we used to be pre-K eight. And she came back from Harriet Tubman just because she wanted to come back to our community and support our students. And she was also super excited to be able to focus on math. Um, so those are some of our amazing new additions. Um, I, if you remember from the beginning, I was saying we were hiring a new principal secretary to place Miss April. Well, the person we hired ended up leaving us before she really ever came in and worked in our building. Uh, and so now we're in the process of hiring a principal secretary again. Uh, so that one is still open. So that's been, you know, a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out how to manage. Because if you were if you were here before, you know, Miss April did a lot, um, and so now we're working on trying to get somebody in there to help carry some of that load for me and really our whole building. Because you know, she manages payroll. That position manages payroll, manages all the staff time in and out, and really ordering and all sorts of things that just take a lot of time. So I'm working on that. Uh, Tina and hopefully Allie and Miss Garnett, our school secretary, will be working on interviewing on Monday to try and get that refilled. And hopefully that person sticks with us uh, to the point where we get to actually have them in building and work. So those are some of our updates as far as that goes. In addition to the math and literacy team, when I was saying our qualified mental health professional, he's kind of leading our social emotional learning team of course, with Tina and I also supporting, but he's kind of taken the lead of just jumping in with our school psychologist who also got added more time. And they're really getting ready to launch a lot of the work around the social emotional support. And they also connect with families when we're really struggling with engagement around how do we get resources to try and help families get more engaged. Um, so that's been awesome. 
Uh, a couple other quick updates. Uh, one of the biggest things we're really focusing on is I've been I've been going into seesaws and going into class meetings and really trying to help give teachers some feedback around how do we make sure that our small groups are like effective and focused on the core curriculum. And then additionally, then how do we make sure that we're putting out some videos that are supporting the learning as well so that when families that can't make the live time still have that that access to not only the seesaw like activities, but some lessons that help lead the seesaw activities. And so some of that is still, you know, there, some of that is still a work in progress and I'm trying to help teachers get there. But like I was sharing earlier, this is all new and this is a lot of work. And so it's just trying to help support teachers in getting systems and routines down so that this becomes hopefully more kind of, of a, a normalized feeling of how do we get this done? And it's something that feels more achievable. Um, and my hope is that we're not doing this for the rest of the year, but at the same time, I think we got to get a system in place that's prepared for in case we are doing this for the long term, that it's as effective as possible and it's getting families and students what they need to be you know, supported academically um, and able to access it based on their various schedules. Um, and then additionally, now what we're starting to do is starting to pull out and having some of our support staff start scheduling around live times for the people, for students that need support. Because what I'm really, since our gen ed teachers are needing to lead the whole group, even when they're doing small group instruction, they're focusing on that core instruction. So what they should be learning at grade level and what those priority standards are. We're now trying to get a layer of additional support to start pulling students as we see data around where students are at outside of their live time to start giving some more to support for them to make sure we don't have the gap get larger for our students that are already kind of struggling with access and struggling with the academic piece and so how do we create opportunities to kind of give a little bit more support in that and so that's the next thing we're kind of launching into and developing that support schedule for those students um and then a couple things that we've tried to prioritize is really giving opportunities for families to come and grab hopefully get tangible things and so that's where we started doing the wednesday pickups so if families haven't checked that out yet every Wednesday from 10 to 12, and then also from three to five, we got pickup of, a lot of times it's gonna be like materials, like in a minute, if for grade levels that didn't get whiteboards, the district is sending us a bunch of materials and supplies that we can get out. And it's gonna be making sure we have a whiteboard in every student's hand with whiteboard markers so that they can be accessing a lot of the learning in a way that's gonna be hopefully the least barriers to it. And they have the tools for that. And so it's just getting out those kind of materials, but also then grade level teachers are often sending out different packets or assignments or projects that they wanna send home through those Wednesday pickups. And then now just this past week, we also launched the library book pickup. And so each week you can come and swap out six books from our library um, so that you have hopefully a rotating selection of books to read at home. Um, and you can keep them for two weeks, keep them for however long you need, but then you, when you wanna switch them, you just come back by on another Wednesday and swap them out. And so we're really trying to see that. And I, from what I heard, I wasn't at it this Wednesday. The first Wednesday we had a decent amount, but then this Wednesday, I think we had all, we had over a hundred families coming and grabbing stuff. So it was cool to see that kind of getting boosted up and people coming in and participating in that. I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of it. Um, and then the other thing that's really taken on a lot of our time is just the tech support. I think that's the piece that like, is adding so much to the layers, especially for, you know, Ms. Turner and I and the support people is, we've got to make sure tech is working for families, otherwise they can't access our learning. And so a lot of it is like us making sure families have hotspots, us making sure that the hotspots are working, making sure that families got uh, working Chromebooks and that we kind of are getting everybody swapped out and kind of being tech support and taking calls. A lot of our support staff is helping with that as well. Um, and so that's been a lot of kind of our focus so far. And then I think as we're moving forward, some of the things that I wanted to share as far as what our goals are as we step into these next couple of weeks is we just got, and I think I shared earlier in the year, but we got a, um, a grant that I was working on with some central office staff over the summer. We got a grant for uh, Lego engineering kits and they just got delivered like a week ago. And so now Mr. Todd, some of our specialist teachers are working on um, kind of getting to know those kits. And then we're going to log them so that we can check them out to families and then they're going to re start recording some lessons so that then we can start rotating these kits because we got three different grade level kits to where it's like a kinder kit i think it's k1 two three and then four five of different challenges around like simple machines and engineering and so we're going to we're in the process now of starting to figure out what we got next week we're going to start getting things out and start recording lessons so that we can then rotate them through classrooms where they'll have them for like maybe five week rotations where we send them home and there'll be a series of videos to watch but then be able to go away from the screen and do some building and some engineering and they take some pictures or videos of what you've done and share it with each other and so that's one of the things we're excited about trying to get is just what are the opportunities we can find that we can give 
students and families away from the screen, while it still might need to be supported by that, how do we give them opportunities to go engage in things not always at a computer? And so that was one thing I was really excited about, and I'm excited to kind of get that going. We're just getting to know the kits a little bit, and now then to Mr. Todd and Miss uh, Jen are going to start working on getting some videos and some piece together, and then our librarian is going to work on cataloging the kits and making sure we get inventory so then we can check them out. And then when we get them back in, we have a whole sanitation process we're getting into and then being able to recheck them out to the next class. So we're working on getting that all up and running. Hopefully at some point in October, we'll be ready to start handing those out. Uh, and then we're really trying to build up the community piece right now too. And so uh, we had, you know, usually we would have a spirit week right around now. And so right now we have our SEL team working, our climate team working on planning our spirit week and how we can make that happen virtually um, and kind of be able to create some excitement and some engagement. And somehow they're looping me into where I have to do some sort, maybe Miss Turner, I was saying she could be a choice, some sort of like karaoke or embarrassing prize, I guess, for the winning, I don't know, grade level or something. They already have started reaching out to figure out how do we build some excitement and some fun around it. So that should be coming out here in the next week or two. Um, and then the other things is like I was sharing with uh, you guys a little bit earlier is trying to think through how do we do things like Family Friday and like this coffee chat where it's the most accessible to families. And so that's too when we get into kind of the questions and discussion, I'm curious to hear if people have ideas about when would be and how would be the best way to engage in those kinds of things. Because I think we want to see more, we want to find ways to be more engaged with families and create that community because Boya Humboldt is usually a hub for our community, and we have so many things we do together, and it's so hard to do that when we can't be together. And so that's something I want us to be thinking about. Um, and then I would say just the last update and plug is um, SUN, our SUN program, uh, Mr. Robert, and he works at SEI, and that's our SUN partner, which is typically our before and after school, well, not before, our after school programming and then summer programming often. Uh, he's going to be launching his kind of summer programming or his fall after school programming. And one of the things that we we talked about and really wanting to focus on in that, because I think he has a, he's supposed to create one online uh, virtual course and he's going to do that for all students at BEH and they're partnering kind of like they did in the summer with other SUN programs to offer virtual after school activities. But then additionally, what he's really working on, and I love Mr. Robert because he's really creative and also really responsive to what we feel like we need, is focusing on those kinder families. And the fact that we don't really have a community yet because we started virtually and so it's really hard. And so one of the things he's gonna launch here in the next, um, I think it's in the next week, is he's gonna have registration for kinder families specifically just at BEH, not mixing other schools, to start doing like, a, he's gonna do like kits, I think is his plan, where it's like a family project that he wants to send home each week and that then you can do together and then share with other families and have like a common time to be doing that. And so I think he's trying to come up with that. And he's also trying to come up with that in a way that it's like you have the time to do it outside of the school day. Right. So like you have it for that week and you can do a family project together in like on like a Sunday and have the materials for it and then share what your project was with other kinder families. So we're trying to really think through how do we create opportunities for the building of community, especially with our, our kinder families who are brand new to us often, unless they have had siblings coming through. Um, and how do we create those connections? And similarly, that's why, and I plugged it earlier, but just to plug it again, if you haven't like logged into our opt-in um, student directory, we're gonna start putting that together and sharing that out with grade level families that um, have opted into it so that we can also start having some ways to contact each other between grade levels. And I think I have about 46 families that have opted in so far, but I just wanna make sure I get the word out for people that want to, that they can opt in before we start sharing out the directory so that people have an opportunity to connect with each other. Cause I'm only gonna share the directory with people that opted into it um, so that then it's, we're not having it where it's confusing of why, who you're getting contacted by. Um, I think those were my updates. And then I wanted to be able to open up the floor to any questions, thoughts, also just conversation people wanna have feedback about what we could do or ideas you have about what we could do better, how we want to move forward, what would feel supportive for your families. Um, and then also, if people want to take a minute um, and unmute and just introduce yourself, I think it would be cool for people to know who the other parents are and what grade level your students are at. So if we want to take a minute and do that, that would be awesome. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording and just and then we can get into our own conversation. Uh, and then hopefully more people will join us next week at our, our next month at our coffee chat as we continue to do these.